How's it going guys? It's Garrett with Gulf Coast Angling coming at you from my home office on opening weekend of Florida snapper season. So as is tradition, opening weekend has awful weather. Uh, it's been about three years running where we haven't been able to fish opening weekend because of the weather is just very, very bad. It's uh, blowing about 20 to 25 knots, uh, south wind, uh, pop-up showers all over the place. And not to mention a wave forecast of three to five feet. If I had to guess, I would say it's probably more like five to seven feet. So we're staying here. Uh, and as a result, I wanted to do something a little bit different. So what you are seeing here is obviously Google Earth, uh, but it's also populated with some things that may or may not look familiar to you. So I see a lot of people ask on public forums, uh, Facebook groups, or even just ask me in general, how do you find your fishing spots? How do you plan your fishing trips? And how do I do that to sort of get a head start on the offshore fishing game here in the panhandle of Florida? So there's uh, a steep learning curve to that process, but I want to try to narrow that down for you guys. I haven't noticed a good video uh, on YouTube that, that sort of covers this topic. So uh, I figured I'd make one. And uh, if it's helpful, great. If not, then sorry, I wasted your time. So like I said earlier, we're looking at Google Earth here. Uh, maybe not a familiar view to you, but I want to show you how to get your Google Earth screen to look something like this. So I have a mix of public's, public reefs and also some semi-private reefs. We're going to focus on sort of just planning your fishing trip as if you had no bottom spots, no spots at, at all just wanted to get offshore and, and sort of uh, begin fishing. So let's take everything away. And just looking at this map right off the bat, you're gonna notice some distinct features that are sort of calling, calling attention to themselves. And you wouldn't be dumb to think to target these areas right off the bat. So what you're seeing right here where my mouse is hovering, this is called the edge. Some people call, you know, Colloquially, colloquially say the edge extends downward. I, I personally call just this region the edge, and then all these other regions have different names. So, so this is the nipple. Um, leave it to the imagination why it's called that. This is the elbow. And then obviously everyone has different names for, for different regions, but you're going to see the, the trisler grounds are going to be somewhere. Uh, this is the spur, the double nipple as we get even further offshore. Um, all of this forms what's called the DeSoto Canyon, and it is the some of the closest deep water fishing that you're going to experience along the Gulf Coast and subsequently leads to a wide range of species, wahoo, mahi, marlin, uh, for pelagics. And then on bottom fishing, you have gag grouper. Uh, some people even catch red grouper, scamp, uh, red snapper, obviously. Um, really right, a wide range of species that you can target right off the bat from this area. So starting at the most northerly point, what's, what's often the most accessible point to uh, many fishermen, we can use the, the ruler app to determine what we're looking at distance-wise. So to begin fishing the, the edge, we're, we're looking at anywhere from 25 to about 30 miles from Pensacola Pass. We're looking at anywhere from about 25 to 35 miles from the Destin Pass. And then if we wanted to come from Orange Beach Pass, it's going to be a little bit further at 37 to about 46 miles. So if you had no spots in mind, no idea where you wanted to go, at the very least, what you could do is take Google Earth, zoom way in on this ledge. You see it's a very distinct ledge. And let's just pop, plop a waypoint down and put it right on that edge. Just grab this number. Plug it into your chart plotter, your bottom machine, and head that way. You're going to find bottom spots. Uh, you, now, whether or not they hold fish, uh, you know, you're know, you going to have to find that out on your own. There's a whole whole different conversation to be had about having the, the right, right live bait, uh, having the right setup, combos, etc. Not the scope of this conversation, but either way, you're going to find bottom spots that hold fish if you just do that. So maybe you don't want to go find your own spots. Maybe you want a little bit more of a head start than, than just plugging in a random spot on Google Earth and going to find them. Well, fortunately, there's a solution for that as well. Um, love them or hate them. Um, 
they have they have mixed reputation because some people do not want their bottom spots to be sp- sold online. Other people love the fact that they can go buy spots. Uh, there's a website called Strike Lines, which publishes tons of free reefs. So these are all publicly available numbers. You can get them from your local government. Uh, Strike Lines actually took the courtesy of compiling all of these into one centralized location and giving you download friendly versions. Uh, so you can plug those into your low rants. You can plug them into your, your iPhone, or in this case, Google Earth. We're, we're doing Google Earth to be able to visualize uh, how to exactly do that. So it's it's very, very easy. Uh, I, I already downloaded them here. We're going to click and boom, they're installed. Easy as that. Now you have hundreds of fishing spots to go to. And if you look, we even have some edge numbers. So um, I would not rely on these too much because they're probably targeted pretty heavily. But uh, if you wanted to, you could go to the edge without without hunting the numbers yourself and boom, you have them right here. So that is the quickest and easiest way to sort of plan your bottom fishing spots. Um, now, what you're going to catch on these on these different spots uh, might vary to some degree. So um, as we get a little bit deeper, anything north of the, the edge, north of this spot right here, you're primarily going to catch snapper. So pretty much all of these spots are going to be snapper, snapper, trigger fish, uh, your shallow water uh, bottom fish species. Now, as we get to the edge and as it gets a little bit deeper from the edge onward to these these ships out here, you know, you're going to have some opportunity to catch amberjack, grouper, uh, scamp, vermilion snapper, aka mingo, aka bee liners. They have about half a dozen names. Um, so the deeper you go, the more variety you're going to get in your species. But either way, invaluable tool to to get your your fishing um, off the ground. I know it can be a little bit daunting when you download these numbers and then you see hundreds and hundreds. Um, but all of these spots hold fish. It's just a matter of taking the time to figure out which of these you like personally, which of these tend to give you better luck. And, and from there, you can sort of narrow down your favorites. Uh, you can take some and strike them off your list as do not visit. This was a waste of my time. And you can highlight others as uh, return to. So strike lines plus Google Earth equals a very quick and easy way to plan your bottom fishing trips. So I did want to take sort of the graduating step from Google Earth and and show you guys what that looks like. It's going to set you back about 200 bucks a year, and that is called Hilton's. So Hilton's is more of a trolling tool than it is a bottom fishing tool, uh, but it does have some limited upside for bottom fishing as well. What you're seeing here is their uh, 3D bottom uh, filter. And it really shows you uh, sort of the, the bottom contours at a very high level. Um, so we can see leaving Pensacola Pass that there's bottom contours heading out through the buoys. And then as you get offshore, you can sort of see what depths you can expect to fish at at any given point in time. So let's go back to where we were with the edge. Let me zoom in a bit more. And we can see here, it starts at about 110 feet, uh, right at the beginning of the edge. But as you can see, these numbers get, or these lines get closer and closer together, which means it has a steeper drop off the further you go offshore. So this is going to creep from about 110 to about 180 to about 200. And as we get into the DeSoto Canyon proper, it's going to level out, level out at about 300 and get only get deeper as we go further and further offshore. So, um, Hilton's is a, is a pretty good tool to begin your, your planning for a bit more advanced bottom fishing, um, but primarily is going to be focused on trolling, and that's with the chlorophyll f- functions and the altimetry, altri- altimetry functions. So with the chlorophyll functions, we can see where what the water color is and, and sort of plan our trips around that. So Blue water happens to be close. We don't have a super useful satellite shot due to cloud cover. Um, but in this in this cl- satellite shot, we see there's a color change about 30 miles offshore right before the Oriskany. Um, and then it sort of works southwest and blends. 
But then we get over west and see that there's probably a pretty good rip right here. So if I wanted to troll and head way offshore to the to the oil rigs, this might be a, a, a notable location. Um, I can validate that by going to salinity patterns and seeing that there is a pretty steep salinity curve right there where it's, it's mostly fresh water, but then sharply gets a lot more salty and even more salty the further, further offshore we go. And then I can look again at the altimetry patterns. This shows where there are upwelling currents where nutrients are being pushed up versus downwelling currents where nutrients are being pushed down. And we can see there's bad downwelling uh, way offshore and some decent upwelling, you know, south of the Mississippi River Delta. So if I were to go hypothetically go trolling this weekend, it looks like that rip right here would be a pretty good bet, um, if if anywhere. We know it's too rough to go, but hypothetically speaking. So um, Hilton's is is a subscription-based model. It's 200 bucks a month. But uh, if you do plan to do any level of trolling, uh, I wouldn't say it's required. There are public resources you can use to get this information, um, but they're they're sort of a hassle. Uh, they they don't give you the fishing spots here, and they definitely don't have something as useful as these bottom contours here. So, I know similar topics have been covered um, in in similar videos. Uh, I hope I I presented it in a way that's understandable. Uh, I really just want people to to have the success that we've been able to enjoy fishing. Uh, anything to lessen the learning curve is is good in my book. So hopefully this guy this helped you you guys out. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of people watching this who who know more than I do. And uh, this was a waste of their time. But otherwise, if, if you did get something out of it, please let me know. I'd love to hear feedback. Um, I might do an expanded version on uh, different regions like the nipple, the elbow, and then even the deep water oil rigs, the double nipple, et cetera. Um, but for now, let's let's keep it let's keep it close in. Um, and as we as we work our way up to further offshore and further offshore, um, we might cover those in, in later videos. So thank you guys for watching. If you're new here, I would love if you stuck around and uh, maybe the weather will allow us to actually go fishing rather than talk about fishing. Um, but otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and have a good one. I'll see you on the flip side. Uh, hopefully fishing next time. Peace out. Let's not get too excited, everybody. Calm down. <laughs>